Well, good morning, church. Let's stay together. Uh, enter into a time of worship and praise. Come on.
are who you say you are.
Hey, you guys can have a seat. Hey, uh, I'm Bruce, one of the pastors here. Thank you so much for uh, being a part here at church, on Authentic Life Church. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Meet some new people today, by the way. Welcome to those of you that are participating online also. Hey, in just a moment, we're gonna bring our tithes and offerings. We have this opportunity. I always think it's just an awesome thing because I love giving and generosity. Hopefully you do too and being a part of things. Hey, uh, one of the things that's pretty cool is that we actually had our annual meeting and gathering and budget meeting last week and voted in to be able to put in a new parking lot. And so that's going to be coming up in a couple weeks. You can already see some patch, patchwork happening. So that's pretty awesome. Hey, uh, if you're new here today, we'd love for you to fill out a card or if you've never filled out a card yet and let us know that you exist, uh, we'd love for you to do that or put your prayer needs on there. If you're uh, online, you can just text CONNECT or type that in. And uh, the number you see here is also going to be the texting for our giving. And so if you'd like to text to give, or you can do that online, just click on give. Or those of you that are here in the service, if you want to drop it off on a Dropbox on your way out, would be wonderful. Thank you guys in advance for all that you guys do and how you participate and join us in the things that we're doing here at church. Hey, I have a couple of announcements. One of them is this, is that uh, we are sending off Center Church, which is our first church plant, next week. They're actually going to come up on the stage and be a part of here. But also what you're going to notice is a lot of familiar faces because we actually send off people, which means that we have some missing links inside of our ministries, uh, whether it's children's or youth and, and, and people volunteering. But one of those areas that got hit kind of hard is our tech ministry, which is our camera people, uh, people doing sound, lights, all the things that are tech. And so if you at all would be interested in joining the tech team, which is a cool, fun team, uh, we're having a lunch after the second service next week on September 12th. So just kind of put that down and say, yeah, I just want to check it out. You're not signing up. You're just eating and listening to what we're going to do. So that's next week. If you'd like to be involved in that, that'd be wonderful. Another thing is, is on Wednesday, uh, September 22nd, we are actually having a prayer and praise night kicking off our fall campaign. And uh, that is just a night of prayer and worship. We have just, just a cool time, but we're going to pray for our country, pray for ourselves, pray for our church, pray about everything that's going on in our culture and praying for our lost friends. And so uh, join us here Wednesday the 22nd. Uh, speaking of fall campaign, you guys all got a card there on your seats. Uh, this isn't just for you to read, though uh, I'd love for you to do that, but also to grab and invite your friends. We have a bunch in the foyer to grab. Uh, we are sending out tens of thousands of mailers out into all the communities that are, that are a little bit bigger than this, but letting people know we exist and we love people and we want you to be a part of our third year anniversary, and uh, which is in, in three weeks, we're celebrating our third year anniversary or our birthday, so that's pretty cool. But we're also, if you look on the back, you can see that our fall campaign is chosen and all about learning our identity in Christ. So we're gonna have sign up starting next week for our fall campaign. Well, let's pray for our offering and let's pray for our service. Lord God, thank you so much for being awesome. Thank you so much that you draw your people here no matter where, whether we're participating online or here in service. We are thankful that you are good and that you love us. And now we pray for this offering that you use it to further your kingdom, to give glory. Thank you that we get to participate in the things that matter to you. And we want to thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing today? Hey, we're closing our series, Wow Factor, which has been incredible. But before we get into that, I have a couple things to point out to you. If you look on your seats, you'll see one of these, this invite card right here. Take a look at that. We have some big Sundays coming up over the next few weeks. Uh, we're doing a big life group launch, and signups for life groups start next week. Don't miss it. Some of the groups I know will fill up fast. And uh, then the following week, we are celebrating three years as a church, Authentic Life Church, three-year anniversary on the 19th. You can see that all on there. And then on the 26th, when we actually launch our life groups, they sign up, start next week, 26th, they launch. And on that Sunday, we are starting a chosen series. And we're, we're kicking it off with this book, a 30-day devotional called Chosen, uh, talking about our identity in Christ. And all of our life groups will be doing this together for the first 30 days through life groups. And then that just springboards us into our life group season. Uh, so now 
we're gonna get into our series, Wow Factor, and we've been uh, talking through how when we center our life around Jesus, that we should expect to live a life filled with power and love and peace and all these things that come with it and joy as Pastor Bruce taught about last week. And, and we see these things when our life it, it is centered around Christ and we're walking with this wow factor. We come out of the darkness and into the light. We all want that, right? How many of you sometimes feel like that darkness you walked out of has turned into a storm cloud and just tries to keep following you everywhere you go? You're, you're trying to do the right things. You may even be really dedicated in prayer and reading your Bible, but you feel like there's just this dark cloud and maybe uh, there's this battle in your mind and there's things going on, doubts and fears that creep in and feel like they kind of want to trap us sometimes. They want to contain all those things like the power and love and peace and joy. They keep those things trapped. And sometimes there are things that we battle through in our mind with doubts and fears that will just kind of ruin all those great things that want to come out of this wow factor and this life that is uh, centered around Jesus. Whenever an elephant is young. Whenever you got a baby elephant, if you want it to get a baby elephant, a pet, uh, you can tie it up if you want to keep it contained somewhere. You can tie it up with a simple rope chain and uh, tie it to a tree or something, and they won't go anywhere because they can't break it because they're little. But elephants have such an incredible memory that they never forget that. They never forget that they could not break loose from a little rope, a little chain. And as they grow larger and become such a powerful creature and they grow to full size, some elephants can still be contained by the same rope, the same little chain that trapped them as a child, even though they have more than enough power to break free. It's the memory. It's the memory that keeps them trapped. It's that fear of that rope, that chain that contains them and keeps them contained even though they could break free from that. There's something called neuroplasticity. I bring it up because it's fun to say. Neuroplasticity. No, it's, uh, it's something that happens in our brain. We use this when we learn new things like uh, a new language or a new instrument. These repetitive actions, repetitive motions, repetitive thoughts, they create new neural pathways in our brain to remember something a lot quicker. The more you do it, the quicker you remember it. And you have to be able to do that to speak fluently in a language or to play an instrument well. You have to get to where it's just natural. And you create these neural pathways that just, they, they trigger and they go there a lot quicker. But it is not only with good things. We do this with negative thoughts. We do this with addictions because we go to something so often that we create these new neural pathways that want to go there so much faster. So something that may have been a struggle for you may have been, you, you, may, you may have had more control over it in the past, but the, as time went by and you went to it more often, you just kind of have these triggers that take you there quicker. And it may be an addiction, like I said, or it could just be negative thinking. You're a lot quicker to go to doubt. You're a lot quicker to go to fear because you've been doing it so long. And these thoughts want to keep you contained. They want to keep you trapped. And they want to mute all the great gifts that God wants to do in you and through you. The ways that God wants to use you, fear can keep you trapped. Romans 12, verse 2. And we're mainly going to be in 1 Kings today. So if you want to hang out there, you can. And I have a few other scriptures that I'll throw at you. Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And as we close this series, Wow Factor, centering our life around Jesus, we're going to center our minds. No, we're gonna center our minds and our thoughts around Jesus today. And that's what we're gonna look at. When we get in his light, when we get, begin to walk with this wow factor, there are all these great things that come from it. But when we get out of step with him, when we're not really uh, pursuing him in the way that we should, there's a lot of things that come with that, fear, panic, uh, anxiety. And I don't want you to know that in no way am I diminishing serious conditions or uh, chronic conditions. This, what we're about to go through today, is only good for all of us. Regardless of where you are, 
regardless of what's going on, this will only help all of us. Would you guys join me in prayer as we uh, get into the word today? God, we thank you so much that we, we can honor you by worshiping here together, that we can come to a place and be in your presence and, uh, and lift up your name, hear your word, and I pray that it will change us. I pray that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we will be hearers and doers of your word. God, thank you for, for what you have for us today. Would you speak through me in Jesus' name? Amen. All right, we all have fears. We all have fears. And this message I have for you today is called Overcoming Doubt. We all have fears. Maybe yours is FOMO, fear of missing out. You don't like to miss out, so you go, go, go. Maybe you have fear of rejection. Maybe you have fear of regrets or fear of failure. No one wants to admit that they have fear of failure, but I can say I struggle with it. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to fail as a parent. I don't want to fail as a husband. I don't want to fail uh, with my work. And, and those fears can creep in if we don't keep them in check. This is real stuff that we deal with and fear can get into our minds and wage war. Second Timothy 1.7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. Sound mind, the Greek word for that, sophroneo, this, could, this whole scripture could be translated like God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power and love, and he has given you a mind that has been delivered, rescued, revived, salvaged, protected, and brought into a place of safety and security so that it is no longer affected by logical, unfounded, and absurd thoughts. Amen. Fear can make us irrational and it can make us illogical. And it can be like that dark storm cloud that follows us around and we feel like that's inside of our brain sometimes and we don't know what to do, we don't know how to get out of it. Today we're gonna be looking at Elijah in 1 Kings. This is someone who prayed down some of the greatest miracles we see in the Bible. This is someone who is bold, who was filled with authority, but he was also kind of a lone ranger. And we see through his journey, we see hints and clues of doubt and fear and panic and anxiety. And we see these things creeping in. And that's who we're gonna look at today. If you want, you can go to chapter 18, 1 Kings 18, verse 46. I'm gonna recap a little bit of Elijah and then catch up with you there. In chapter 17, Elijah stood up to King Ahab. And uh, in this time, drought, was scary. It was a really, really big deal. It's, it's always scary, but this, this could, could really, really affect them in huge ways. And Elijah stood up to King Ahab and said, it's not gonna rain again until I say so, until God says it's going to rain again. And so he, he tells that to King Ahab. Shortly after, he goes to this widow's house. He's traveling and he needs a place to stay and God led him here. And he says, ma'am, I'm supposed to stay here with you. And she's like, well, all right. Come on in. And then he says, first, I'm hungry. I need you to make me a meal. And she says, well, actually, we're just about out of all of our food. And I have enough to make one more meal for me and my son before we starve to death. This is all we have left. And he said, don't worry. It's all good. But first, can you make me that meal? <laughs> I need you to make me that meal. And he says, then he tells her, your, your jar of flour and your jug of oil will not go empty until the day God returns rain to this land. So they're in this drought and he says, it's, it's okay. God's gonna do a miracle here. It, you're not gonna run out. If you obey, if you do what God says right now, you're gonna be taken care of. Then later on, this lady's son dies. He dies and then Elijah prays over the boy and he comes back to life. In chapter 18, he challenges all these false prophets. There are over 800 prophets of, of Asherah and Baal, and they're having this argument about whose God is real. And Elijah's like, I'll, let's go, let's, let's, let's do it. I'll show you guys that my God is the one true God. So they decided to build altars. And they built these altars where all these false prophets had the first chance to go. And they built these big altars and said, okay, whoever can pray down fire from heaven and burn up this altar, that's whose God is real. So you have 
all these false prophets uh, crying and shouting and screaming and, and even begin cutting themselves and performing rituals and nothing's happening. Hours and hours go by and Elijah even begins to taunt them. He says, hey, maybe you need to pray louder. Maybe he's in the bathroom or he's taking a nap. He can't hear you. Y'all aren't loud enough. And he's just joking and, and taunting them. And so they had their chance. The hours go by and then Elijah prays and fire comes down from heaven and burns up the altar and he had even drenched it in water just to take it a step further. And, and he prayed this fire down from heaven. Now we're catching up. Chapter 18, verse 46. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. He outruns a chariot. He outruns a chariot here. This guy is crazy. He's bold. He's fearless. But then in chapter 19, we can start reading verse 1. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. She sends a death threat. Verse three, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. After doing all of these crazy things and being so bold, all of a sudden he's afraid and he wants to die. I'm really glad the Bible tells the whole story. I don't feel so bad now. I know that strong people struggle too. I know that, that we can all deal with these fears and these doubts and these horrible thoughts that want to trap us. James 5 says Elijah was a man just like you and I, just like you and I, and we can learn a lot from his story. When you look at your situation and you determine, I don't have what it takes to make it through this, you are letting fear come in you're letting fear get a hold of you. You might say, no, I'm just being real. I'm looking at the facts. The truth is you're being forgetful of how good God is, that he's in control, that he has a purpose and a plan for your life, and that whatever you're going through right now, if you cling to him, you will come through stronger. You will come through more bold and victorious and ready for what he has for you. Don't let fear creep in. Don't let it get a grip on you. Matthew 6:33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We want to get all these things, that part of the verse, all these things to be added to us, but too often we skip the seeking first his kingdom, seeking righteousness. You've heard me say it before, righteousness is simply right choices. Right choices, doing the next right thing. That is how we walk in righteousness, listening to him, obeying him. And we know that our faith is not based on works, it's not based on acts, but whenever we are making right choices, whenever we are choosing righteousness, he brings us all these things, the peace, the love, the joy, the things that we long for. The first thing I wanna share with you guys today is that sometimes the only thing you can do is the next right thing at the right time. The people who are bold for God may not always be fearless, but they're faithful. They're faithful to the next right thing at the right time. And especially when fear and doubt want to creep in, it's hard to really know what is ahead. Our, our vision is so blurred. You can focus on the next right thing at the right time. First Kings, and we see this with Elijah here. First Kings 19, uh, we'll finish verse five and then continue. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. Sounds like a dude to me. Um, nap, <laughs> eat some food, take another nap. That sounds nice. Sometimes a hearty chicken fried steak and sweet tea and a nap is good for the soul. Can I get an amen? Uh, verse seven. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. So 
the next right thing at the right time. He needed to rest. He needed to eat. He needed to, to just recoup and listen to God. One thing about eating, you don't hear here that the angel spoon fed him or anything like that. He had to feed himself. And I think there's something significant about that because we want God to do everything for us, but sometimes we just don't want to take the first steps. We don't want to do the next right thing. We don't want to make the habit of praying, of reading our Bible. Maybe you feel like it's awkward. You don't know how to pray. Maybe you don't know what to start reading. Maybe it's confusing to you. A lot of times we put it off because we feel bored by it because we're not used to it. Don't rule it out. Don't throw it out because there's so much in the word of God that can transform our minds and, and change who we are from the inside out. But first you need to create that habit. And if it's confusing, there are people who can help you. There are people here who want to walk uh, through that with you. So he fed himself, he rested, he ate. Uh, and then God sent him on this journey, a 200 mile journey, 40 day trip to Horeb, the mountain of God. We'll continue in verse nine. And the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. Kind of sounds like he's whining here. For my, I'd be whining too, this is pretty intense. But the Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. He's giving God this news update as if he doesn't already know. He's complaining, but that's okay. Some, sometimes we don't pray because we feel like we don't pray good. Even if that's what you need to sound like, start somewhere. God can take it. God can take it. If you need to get it out, complain, cry, give him a chance to speak to you. Give him a chance. He can take it, I promise. Verse 11, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Sometimes we think God owes us the grand plan ahead of time. We think we should see the goals, the destination, the bright lights, because that would make it so much easier for us to push through right now. But sometimes he gives us the next step at the right time. And when we listen to that step, you might find it insignificant. What? Go stand right there? Why would you tell me just go, st you can, you're God, right? You can speak to me right here. You know, we, we try to rationalize, we try to figure it out, but sometimes he's, he's just giving you the next step and he's positioning you to hear him. He's positioning you to be in a place where you can hear him, but we have to take that first step. First Kings in 11. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? This thin, sheer silence can be heard. We get so distracted with the lies, with the fear and the doubt, and it's screaming at us sometimes. But when we make that habit and that discipline of spending time with the Lord, we become so familiar with his voice that even his whisper stands out, about, uh, stands out above all the shouting, all the screaming, all the lies that want to steal your attention. We have to get familiar with his voice so that we can hear him when he's speaking. So he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Verse 14, he replied and said the same thing. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. He ate, he rested, he did the next right thing at the right time. He cried it out, he got it out, and then God gives him direction. God gives him instruction. And then he goes on, we're not gonna continue, uh, but he goes on to give him the actual instructions for what he's supposed to do next. But sometimes we just have to put ourselves in the position to hear his voice first. Unless you like walking in that darkness. I know I don't. It's, it's, it's not fun. Walk in his light. 
The, fir- the second point, the second thing I wanna share with you today is do not suffer in silence. As we saw, Elijah is kind of this lone ranger. He likes to do a lot of things uh, alone. And sometimes we have journeys that we are supposed to do things alone. But there's a couple reasons we do this. There's a couple reasons we suffer in silence. Sometimes it's pride. Sometimes it's saying, I can handle this. I've got it. But if you run on adrenaline long enough, you're going to crash and you're going to burn. The other reason that we do this is because we don't want to burden other people. Uh, we don't want to bring the mood down. We, we don't want people to dread being around us because we're going through hard times. And I just want you to know that there are people who want to be there for you in your hard times. Maybe you haven't met them yet, but you need to find those people who actually wanna be there for you. They wanna be the shoulder you can cry on. They wanna be there to challenge you, to push you, but we need that in our life. Too often we try to do things alone. That's why life groups are so important. We, are, we mean it when we say it, we are a church of life groups. You can do the church thing, you can come to church, you can worship and that's great and we can hear the word, but we need community, we need fellowship, we need accountability and people to call us out when we're struggling, when we're weak or to be there just to love on us whenever we're down. We need that in our lives. And one of our core values here at Authentic Life Church is connect. And we are truly a church of life groups. Uh, in the Bible, they worship in the temple, but you see personal ministry done in their homes. And you see so many great things that happen in their homes. Life groups are incredibly, incredibly important for a walk. We actually had one life group this past year who they went through within their families of just the individuals in this group, they went through seven or eight deaths of their families. and. Uh, as unfortunate as that is, I don't think that's a coincidence that they were together, that God brought them together. And there's something that God does when we just open up and we say, God, I'm available, use me. God, allow me to find people to put in my life that are gonna help me and challenge me. And you may say, well, I don't trust nobody. <laughs> Give someone a chance to earn your trust. Give life groups a chance. I promise you will not regret it. So, As we start to close here, let's do the next right thing at the right time. Don't do it alone. Don't suffer in silence. Get in a life group. Last and most important, number three, have a healthy fear for the one who is holy. Have a healthy fear for the one who is holy. Fearing God is not just this like scary thing. We're supposed to be afraid of him. This is... We, we learn the character of God. We learn how good he is. Therefore, we want to honor him because he is so good. We have this healthy fear of him. I mentioned righteousness, right choices, the next right thing at the right time. Righteousness leads us to holiness. Righteousness, right choices lead us to holiness. You know, we, uh, the series and church is about centering our life around Jesus. There is kind of a bad habit that some Christians get into with good intention. They think Jesus first, Jesus first. And so may even uh, carve out time first thing in the morning to pray and read your Bible. But sometimes we get into this habit of it's Jesus first, then work, then everything else, but we leave Jesus out of all those things. Whenever we begin to pursue righteousness, and begin to pursue holiness, our attitude changes with this holy fear of the Lord. It goes from Jesus, then my marriage, Jesus, then work, to Jesus in all these things. Jesus, God, use me in my workplace. Help me be your light in this darkness. God, help me to lead my family in the way you want me to lead them. It's not just Jesus for me and then everything else. It's Jesus in all of these things. It goes from, I guess I need to honor the Lord to know I need to honor the Lord. I must. He has been so good to me. He has been so faithful to me. I've messed up and I don't feel like I deserve it, but I need to honor him with my life. He's given me everything. Why would I not honor him? When we walk this path of righteousness righteousness that leads us to holiness, our perspective changes from these things to, to beautiful things to I long to spend time with him. It goes from being bored and trying to figure it out to I crave this time with him. It's 
pursue righteousness. William Gurnall said, we fear men so much because we fear God so little. What is trapping you? What is holding you back? What's containing you and keeping you from being used and walking with this wow factor, walking with the things that God wants to do in you and through you that will transform us and change us? Psalm 25, 14 says, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. He makes his promises known to us when we fear him, when we honor him. Another translation says, friendship with the Lord is reserved for those who fear the Lord. We want that intimacy with him, but sometimes we don't take the first step in getting closer to him and positioning ourselves to really hear him. We say, God, where are you? But we're walking over here when he's saying, I'm right here, I have not left, I'm waiting on you, I'm not going to leave you, I'm right here. The more we honor him, the more we begin to understand him. The more we understand him, the more we want to honor him. Try not to let tomorrow overwhelm you and stress you, focus on being present and available right here and right now pursue righteousness, pursue holiness, and when that feels confusing and overwhelming, focus on the next right step at the right time. One thing after the next. We're about to move into a time of communion today. You're probably given one of these on your way in. If not, our ushers can help you out. You know, when we're, when we're not resting physically and mentally, our mind's not at peace, but when we are not taking care of ourselves spiritually, our soul is not at peace. When we're not right with God, when we're not right with others, our soul is not at rest. In the Bible, scripture is very clear that before we take communion, we must examine ourselves. We must take a look within and say, what is standing in the way? What am I holding on to? What chain? is trapping me, what is keeping me back from being used? God, what, what do I have that I need to ask for forgiveness about? Who do I need to forgive? These are things we must recognize and make right with the Lord. But before we do that, I wanna pray with you guys. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? I know we would all love to walk with more power and boldness and authority and gentleness and peace but some of us may not even have a relationship with Jesus maybe you've never prayed that prayer or maybe you question when you did it if you meant it if you're here today and you say I, I'm, I don't want to play games anymore I don't want to mess around I, I really want to choose him for the rest of my life if you wanna make sure that you know Jesus and you want to make him the Lord of your life, would you raise your hand here today? Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask everyone, whether you're watching online or you're in this room, you raised your hand. Maybe you didn't raise your hand. God knows your heart. If you wanna make that decision today, would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Father, I'm sorry I've failed you. I'm sorry I've not chosen you. Thank you for choosing me. Even when I didn't know it, right now I receive you. I receive you. Make me the Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Would you use me? God, would you help me to show this light to those around me? Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when we take communion together, like I said, we check ourselves. We look within. And if there's anything standing between you and the Father today, let's handle it. Let's deal with it. So we're going to just take a few moments, take a few seconds here in silence and uh, just talk to the Lord, listen to the Lord. And if there's anything you need to make right with him, let's do that right now.
1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, he gave the bread and the wine as represent, representation saying, this bread is my body broken for you. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, remember me. God, I pray that we will never forget the sacrifice you made, sending your son Jesus, dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you. Thank you. We don't deserve it, but you chose us and you continue to choose us. I pray that not a day will go by that, it, that we don't remember what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take communion together. stand together and just continue worshiping our Father, inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit to come and have His way in this place. As the Spirit was moving over the waters, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. on us, come rest on us, and calm down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you feel the room, you hear it, I know you, I'm moving, I'm here and I know you who feel me, calm down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you feel the room, you hear it, I know you, I'm moving, I'm here and I know you will fill me. Oh, come and fill me. As the spirit is moving over the world. 
It's a prayer for him to come and to stir our hearts. It's a prayer for him to come and to awaken us to his purpose and to his plan, to deepen his intimacy with us. It's a prayer for him to come and cause us to live. But then we sing, come awaken your city because we believe that they need what we've got. So we cry out to our God, not just for ourselves, but for those who are far from him. Because the reality is this, the Bible says that we are God's children. The Bible says that we are heirs to the throne. The Bible says that God loves us. But the Bible also calls us ambassadors for Christ. What does that mean? It means that God has put us on mission. God has said, I didn't just save you for you, but for you to go out and to call my people out there. Those that I've been preparing, those that my heart is for, those that Jesus died for, to go out and be an ambassador for Christ. To go out and to be a missionary. To go out and say, God, I will go to those you are calling me to. See, the reality is this, church. You have been uniquely positioned to reach your neighborhood. God has put you in your workplace for a reason, and it's not just a paycheck. God has called us into a sports uh, team or maybe our school, but God has uniquely positioned you to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ because there are people that are far from Jesus that need to be able to hear about the gospel and to respond to the gospel. When you came in this morning, there was a card in your seat. Would you, everybody, grab this card? Would you do that for me? Everybody just grab this card. I'm not going to make you do anything crazy. Let's just grab the card. And as you take this card this morning, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Will you ask God to put the picture of somebody in your mind that you need to bring the gospel to? Who in your life is far from Jesus? Who in your life is stranded with nowhere to go because they've yet to hear the message of Jesus? that person? Who are you seeing in your mind's eye right now? Church, will you just lift these cards up? Signifying, God, I'm going to take this to somebody. I'm going to ask them. You need to come to my church because they're going to tell you something about Jesus. We're not trying to grow a big church. We're trying to save people. Let's pray. Father, I pray for these cards right now. I pray that your anointing would fall on these cards in some weird way. Lord, there's no power in paper. But God, I know that you are preparing those in advance for me to go to, for us to go to. So God, would you lead us? Father, would you take us to those that are far from you? Lord, would you awaken my heart to be burdened for my city? Would you awaken my heart to be burdened for those that are far from you, God? Lord, would you give me boldness, give me strength to go out today, God, that you would raise up an army in this place today, God, that we would no longer see the world about me, but God, that I would have the eyes of Jesus, God, that I would be awakened to those that are hurting and that are lost, and I would have the boldness to go and to proclaim the good news, to just simply even invite someone to the church. So God, arm these with grace. Arm these with mercy. Oh God, we need you to come awake in our hearts. Oh God, come and awake in our hearts. Come awake in your people. Come awake in your city. Oh God, oh
things are possible. Yo. Yeah.
power forever to the name above all names. That's, that's what I want my life to say. And uh, fears, doubts, whatever, it tries to creep in and rob us of that. Let your life shine. Let it show people what you live for. Let people see the joy that is in you. Let it come out. Break those chains. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for worshiping with us. We love y'all so much. Hey, a couple quick things. Before we go, today we're taking our benevolence offering. This is just the, the additional once a month cash offering and the baskets on the way out that can help us with things like the food bank and, and food and clothing. And, uh, and also don't forget about these invite cards and life groups coming up. We're signing up for groups next week. Don't miss it. We love you guys so much. Be blessed. Have a great Sunday and have a great week. You're dismissed.
Into your 